Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by Matthew Peck of SHP Financial. He is the author of the book, Mind the Gap the cracks in the American retirement system and co-author of the book, SHP Retirement Roadmap, Your Map to Financial Freedom. He's also co-host of the popular financial radio show, Retirement Roadmap Radio Show, which is on WBZ, WRKO, and WXTK. Matthew, thanks so much for joining us. I'm so happy to be here, Seth. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Let's go back in time a little bit. How did you get started in the industry? Oh, a, a long, long time ago. It certainly seemed like it, it but uh, it was 20 years ago now. Um, you know, started off actually for a large insurance company, and I was sort of not door to door knocking, but uh, pretty much as close as you can get. <laughs> so Edward uh, Jones, not got it. Yeah, and then you know, eventually, uh, you know, uh, went and met met my current business partners. Now we went independent in 2003. Uh, originally, again, as an insurance base or an insurance core, but then continued to add on services, you know, added on the securities business and became an RIA, and then added on our sort of full service or our suite of services now, which is building truly comprehensive financial plans uh, for our clients and surrounding them with the professionals that they need, whether it's uh, finance guys or gals or whether it's attorneys or CPAs. Uh, we really try to be the hub of our client's universe. Awesome. So I've, I'm sure the longer version is in one of the books. You, <laughs> so true. I like that you've taken the multi, almost like the multifamily office approach. Talk a little bit about how that differentiates you and how your clients have responded to that over the years. Well, uh, two, two ways. I mean, great point in general. So, so the first thing is, is to how we differentiate ourselves and, you know, being in a sort of small, I guess, small beer in the big scheme of things. But, you know, I mean, some would probably say we're doing OK. But the main point is that we couldn't necessarily compete against the biggest fish out there when it came to marketing and, you know, you know, all this sort of flashy stuff. But we knew we could compete when it came to service. You know, we, 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 knew, we, we, we knew we could compete when it came to relationship building. And so whether it's when they first walk through the door and, you know, sometimes somewhat cheesy, but also really good, you know, like uh, popcorn and, and warm cookies and, but just kind of like knowing your name when you first come in and what type of drink that you want to all the way to, you know, servicing the book, you know, meaning that all of our service team uh, tr tries to, or at least we try to tell them to teach each one, to treat each one of our individual clients like it's their client. It's not just, oh, they're clients of SHP or they're a client of Matt or some of the other advisors. We want all of our service team to take that ownership. So, you know, one example is that we have a quarterly gift and that's just when, okay, hey, what, what did you do for one client? Whether it was because they you know, recently we had a client's mom who passed away. So, you know, one of the service team went above and beyond um, to, you know, send a nice gift. Another, another uh, individual had a uh, hour and a half uh, issue, you know, dealing with fidelity.com, who's our custodian, um, you know, and same idea, you know, we've made sure that we've got them a gift after putting up with all of that rigmarole. And so that is where we're trying to compete. And I think that's really where we're able to differentiate. When it came to kind of how it, it paid us back, well, certainly, you know, 2020 and the COVID time has shown that where we're not only are we sort of, um, uh, we're actually above where we were uh, last year, you know, with all the pandemic, um, uh, you know, keeping in mind. And that's just because we have such good clients. 
whether it was sticking with us during that very difficult time, or whether it was referral to say, hey, look, I'm not sure what your other advisors are doing for you during this you know, very stressful year, uh, but here's what SHP is doing. So it, lo it led to a lot more word of mouth and a lot more referrals. That's wonderful. So you talked about the client service team. Tell us a little bit about your team at, H at SHP. How many folks are on it as of this recording? What are their roles? Talk a little bit about how, that process. No, absolutely. So, so we are, we have about 30 employees all together. So we have six advisors, me included, and um, about 30, uh, 30 employees. Now, some of those are in operations, some are in marketing and whatnot. But each one of the advisors, but the service team itself is, is approximately 10 to 15. So we, we've invested heavily in service. And what's interesting too, Seth, is that when we compare ourselves to other businesses, occasionally people are like, wait, how come you have that many people? Like you seem to be kind of fat there in regards to how many people you have. Um, well, two things there. A, as I mentioned, you know, we really want to invest in service and never get above our skis. You know, we want to be able to do everything that we say we do uh, when, when someone comes on board, we say, look, we're going to do an investment plan, an income plan, tax planning, healthcare, legacy. And so the main point is that we spend a lot of our time with our clients. And so if we weren't, un if we weren't able to do everything we said, then word would spread, right? And so that's, that's one reason why we invested pretty heavily into our service team. And again, as I mentioned, about half of our team or half of our employees are, are ser service related. But the other part too, as I mentioned, is that insurance background too. Well, I think we are a little bit different because we do have, you know, whether it's uh, life insurance on the legacy planning and, and planning for taxes and estate taxes, you know, fixed annuities as well that we sometimes work in as a risk hedge. That's a whole separate line of business products, strategies, so forth that we're just as heavily involved in than your traditional RIA, you know, investment, stock funds, mutual fund space. So that's the reason why we have a very broad uh, and strong service team. Um, but that's a little bit about our structure. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You've alluded to size a couple times. How many households are you serving around right now? So in, we, we, we triage our clients where we have like A plus A's yes. and, and B clients. So we have C's and D's, as I mentioned. We've been in business now, at least independent for close to 17 years. So altogether, it's about a thousand households. However, when it comes to sort of our more, um, our more you know, sort of comp, uh, current uh, sort of evolution or where we are right now, we probably have about 500 families that we really focus on when it comes to applying that, that those full suite of services. And, and Seth, as you mentioned, and, and you summed it up uh, great, which was uh, that sort of multifamily office structure is absolutely what we're trying to go for. Okay, and then approximately how many assets under management does that entail? So currently we're about 560 million of pure assets under management. If you do, you know, we, I can stack on some of the, the fixed annuity, the insurance sure. business, but just for pure RIA uh, book of business and recurring revenue, we have about 560 million at this point. Okay, and you mentioned that client matrix and those quarterly gifts. How, how are you touching your clients and how often are you touching them? Well, we, we I so guess- So that falls under the tiers category as well. Correct. It definitely falls under the tiers category. And the other reason I was somewhat, somewhat hesitant or hesitating is because are you talking 2020 or 2019 uh, because our, our offerings, but I'll, I'll give you what we normally do. Um, what we normally do is the, you know, really focusing on constant communication. And so some of it is pretty simple standard stuff like, you know, weekly emails and newsletters and things along those lines. And you mentioned about our radio show. That's another way that we're, we're pumping that out with, you know, which, which gets repurposed into a podcast, things along those lines. Um, when it comes to client reviews, it's anywhere from semi-annual to annual, again, depending on, on when the, um, uh, sort of the asset and high net worth uh, clients there. But one thing that we also did in 19, and I'll talk about one little tweak we did differently in 20, uh, in 2019 was what we call like wine and wisdom or wine and wealth type of workshops. And what those are is a, a quarterly basis, we'll have a social security representative talk or a CPA come in and talk or a, a Medicare representative come in and talk. And so then it's kind of wine. And so we're kind of whining and dining, having some cheese. Uh, but then it's also wisdom in the sense they're getting good information from it. And so on um, something like that, yeah, I'll, I'll see the client. It might be only a five to 15 minute kind of warm chatter, um, but it's something, again, you're seeing someone physically 
on top of the on top of the audio that they're getting from from the radio, um, as well as some fun client events too. Like we take a boat out in Boston Harbor and, and different things along those lines. Um, to talk about one different thing that we did in 2020, due to the fact that all of those events, as yes. or many people are, won't be shocked with that news, um, were <clears throat> excuse me were just virtual uh, virtual events along those lines. So kind of like virtual wine and cheeses or just a lot more webinars. I mean, webinar, 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 like we used to do generally like a quarterly webinar when it came to the market and what's been happening that during the, during the sort of the main panic, you know, that was now shut down to, I'm sorry, closed down to a bi-weekly uh, webinar that we're, that we're pumping out to all our clients. So we really try to stay in front of them, both sort of audio, audio or, or in that way, as well as visually. Um, and then eventually back in person, which I can't wait to uh, get back to the new normal or whatever it may be. Yes, uh, before COVID, how are you bringing clients in the door? How are you attracting and acquiring them? And has that changed at all since COVID? And if so, how? Yeah, pretty much. We, we really have our, our, our three tiers in a sense of pure marketing events, um, which, which break down to seminar, radio, uh, things along those lines. Another third is from professional referrals, uh, whether it's CPAs or um, attorneys, again, just trusted kind of word of mouth there. And then the other third was just referrals, just pure peer-to-peer uh, -peer or person-to-person -person referrals. So that one third hasn't really changed from 19 into 20. Although when, when you slice the one third of the pie that is truly marketing, you know, seminars or workshops and radio, unfortunately, has come down a lot because people are driving, are, are not driving as much as they once did. But our digital um, has sort of picked up that pace a little bit um, just with, as I mentioned, those webinars and Facebook campaigns and other, other ways of just, you know, as, as I said, standing in front of as best as possible with our clients. Absolutely. Now, are you doing anything specifically to create, to generate those professional referrals and to get your clients to refer or those coming in organically just as a virtue of doing a great job and keeping in touch with people? Uh, I, I, think, I think a little bit of both, honestly. I think we could do more for, to, to, to really cultivate those relationships. So on, on the legal front of it, you know, we, we, have two, we have two main offices, one north of the city, north of Boston and one south of Boston. And so in both of those offices, we have two separate attorneys that are subletting from us. So they're not employees by no means, they run their own estate planning um, firm. However, they're subletting, they're right in the office and talk about a warm introduction either way because we're doing a lot of cross-pollination, uh, meaning that a client may come in from a radio referral and I'll say, hey, you might, you know, you want to see attorney Seth uh, after we're done so he can get Look your- Look at that, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer too. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing what can happen online nowadays. Right. right? <laughs> um, so so you know we, we kind of made sure that they're really part of our process. Um, as I mentioned too about the cross pollination is because the attorneys will do their own marketing, have their own word of mouth, and say, look, hey, now that I have your estate plan in place, you might want to get your financial plan in place. So so very um, again very very sort of integrated uh, in a, into our process. Um, so, but as I mentioned about, could we do more? Yeah, I always feel like we could do more. I think we could sit with, you know, sit, just have lunch with the attorneys a little bit more rather than just sort of waving and saying hi here and there or talking about cases and, and also trying to expand or, or broaden that network too, where we might not have the same type of close working relationship, but maybe more, as you mentioned, Seth, about, uh, hey, you're doing a great job here. I heard about you. Um, so I, I really want to focus on that as we as we grow and because it's the best, you know, word of mouth, as we all know, is the best, uh, best marketing campaign you can have. Absolutely. And then what about those existing clients? What are you doing there to promote that referral consciousness, if anything? So, so during 2019, when we could have in-person events, um, we would have, you know, as mentioned, I was talking about the wine and wisdom events that we have, but then we have sort of almost a specifically, I think compliance uh, can't, we can't name them referral events. Right. But they're more along the lines of, okay, hey, why don't you come out and bring a friend? You right. know, you don't, you don't have to bring a friend. It's not mandatory, uh, but why, why don't you do so? And we'll, we'll kind of meet in more of a, a, uh, a pleasant or a happy um, environment. No, no, you know, no work, no business, just, hey, how are you? 
Um, yeah, and the other thing that we do is just fun, which is again not not a um, not a shock, but it is something that we uh, well I, I just have fun doing is just a lot of golfing as well. And the main point there is that you know there'll be like a uh, you know myself and a, and a business partner or myself and a, and a, a colleague, and then they'll bring a client and that client's friend. You know, so there it's just like, okay, a client's hopefully talking to their friend the entire time while they tootle around in their golf cart. And then it's also talking about something internally, win-win, where now I'm talking with a service team member that may only have been with us for two years, but, you know, getting really, getting to know that uh, individual, you know, a whole lot more, a whole lot better. Um, so those are just some examples of certain things that we're doing to, to try to continue to really, you know, cultivate that and, and promote that. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's kind of, well, there's personal and professional uh, answers to that. Personally, it, it's controlling your own destiny. You know, from day one, it's been, you know, it, it's like, I never wanted to get to, into po office politics. I never once wanted to, I couldn't even understand how enormous, a you know, bureaucracies work. Like, how do you, how do you change a company that has 2,000 people? And obviously there are superstars that can, and, and, I, and I wish them the, the ultimate, um, you know, ultimate compliment that, that are able to sort of turn those, you know, cruise liners. Um, but when it came to sort of running a small business, it's just so much fun because something doesn't work, you fix it and you move on. You know, and it's that type of speed and sort of, you know, rolling with the punches that I really enjoy. Because the other part of it is that it's just new challenges all the time. It's like, you know, because we were like, I'm a, you know, I was actually originally a history and English major, like, you know, wow. I, yeah, finance was not my original background. It was, you know, following history and trends and all of that stuff. So, you know, it certainly helped. But along the same lines, it's like, you know, none of us were sort of, none of us, we learned the job. And I think one of the other things that differentiate us is that we didn't just have this little box, like how to build your business <laughs> kit, you know, that we would open I up. didn't get like, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So if they sell them, let me know. And so we had to sort of, everything came with a fresh set of eyes. Now, I, I can guarantee you probably, what, 75% of the stuff that we do, we probably come to the same conclusions that all other consultants and managers and other businesses came to. Uh, but I think there's also about 25% that is, you know, sort of really organic and really new because we just were like, hey, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, let's try it out. You know, a little trial and error and off we go. With all the success you've achieved, what's your biggest challenge now? Oh, so it's scale. Uh, so it's absolutely scale. And it goes back to that, that, that um, really, really two things, which are interrelated. Um, so as I said about going back to make, make sure our service team is there because I do want to scale it out. However, I, as I was saying, I never want to not do or say we're going to do. I'm very cognizant of our brand and making sure that we um, you know, live up to it, uh, basically. Um, and then the other thing for the advisor who now and, and myself and my two business partners are in very similar situations, you know, we've been sort of hustling now for, well, officially 20, but let's say independent 17 years. And so now it's that transition of, okay, we're more figurehead, we're more management, we're more leadership, and we're not going to be taking on any new clients. And now the onus is on you, uh, you know, 25, 28 30-year-old, uh, you know, next generation type advisors. And how we do that without suffering, you know, setbacks, and maybe it is just one step back, two step forward, we'll see. Um, but how we manage that while at the same time trying to scale and, and, and um, you know, things along those lines is our biggest challenge. Okay, and not well, we don't ask for any investment recommendations on this show. However, I will ask, what are you telling clients about the current market environment? What are your thoughts? Ooh, um, well, that's a great, great question. Um, let me put it this way, two, two things. And I'll talk about the Federal Reserve, then I'll talk about the elections, okay? The, the Federal Reserve has, has sort of, you know, written a new paradigm and a new model that even old school traditionalists like myself are having a tough time wrapping around. I mean, you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can even argue, I'm sorry, you can even argue that modern monetary theory is already upon us, right? And so, you know, I used to think value mattered. I used to think like book value mattered. I used to think that, no, you can't carry on that type of deficit and debt without crowding out the private sector. Apparently, um, that might not be the case. And so 
is it a new paradigm? Have we shifted? Is wealth just strictly in the eye of the beholder and no longer, you know, no longer attached to tangible value? Again, jury's out, don't get me wrong, but that's something that I tell clients about who just say, how did this happen? But, you know, the market's recovering and, you know, actions from the Fed and basically backstopping, you know, another thing that really stood out to me about the Fed's actions was that, okay, if they're in the, you know, junk bond market and the corporate bond market, what's to say that they're not going to get into the equity market if, you know, another big sell-off comes? So, as I mentioned, sort of, you know, getting used to what could be the new market going into the future, or is this just a blip in the, in the um, you know, a, a blip on the radar screen? And then secondly, about the elections, generally, we're just playing it neutral. Um, you know, we, we tell people we, we, we don't want to be too aggressive. We don't want to be conservative. Now, shocking is going to be some volatility. <laughs> Woo, I'm, I'm break, breaking, the, breaking news there, Seth. But, um, you know, there's definitely going to be volatility because we don't see the election itself playing out over the, you know, over two, three weeks or whatever that may be, hopefully shorter, of course. Um, but so we're not being too aggressive or too conservative right now and really trying to stay neutral because one thing you can't predict the elections, much less predict the market's re reaction to that election is even, you, you know, now we're just getting into speculation beyond, you know, anyone's level. So election wise, market wise, just really trying to say, you know, rebalance your portfolios, stay on an even keel, and then just hopefully pick up your head in January or February and, and um, you know, we all know how quickly move, news has been changing recently. So hopefully by then the election's behind us as well as we've got better news on the vaccine front. All right, well, uh, fascinating interview, an incredible story. Uh, anything else you wanna share that I didn't think to ask you? No, I just, I just hope that everyone, that, that, that our listeners, and again, the whole idea about entrepreneurial, I mean, that's what makes us great. Um, you know, in this mention about rethinking stuff. I mean, if, if I thought about what I did as a 40, you know, 41, 42 year old, I'd say, oh, that was too risky. You know, don't even think about doing it. And it's like, wait a second, you know, good thing I was young and stupid. And so, you know, every once in a while have that thought, like you never know, you know what I mean? You, you really never know what could happen. And if it does happen, oh man, it's the best thing in the whole wide world. Awesome. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. This has been Seth Green with Matthew Peck of SHP Financial. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level, but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.